how many sets and repetitions for women in menopause? In this Ask the Expert podcast, I'm responding to an overwhelming number of questions that came in the trail or the response to a post on social media. And it's a post that I post in a couple of different spaces. Are you on TikTok? I am barely there. I am trying to figure it out. Are you on Instagram? Do you use YouTube? If so, you will see some regular snippets of workouts and workout tips there. And we're talking really short, 30, 60, 90 seconds, maybe up to three minutes, but very rarely. So I am at flipping, that's I-N-G by the way, 5-0 TV, flipping 50 TV everywhere. So mistakenly, sometimes people find me on the Instagram and they do only flipping five zero. And that is kind of a secondary account. I know it's strange, but I couldn't actually get that one for the longest time somebody else owned that URL. So we got them out, but I didn't flip. So we're at flipping 50 TV. So I'm going to dive into this episode. Ironically, for a quick social media post, there is a lot to unpack here. And you don't want to be too quick to follow somebody else's advice who says, do X amount of number of sets and repetitions. That that person doesn't know you. And unfortunately, there's a lot of advice like that going on from stranger to stranger. And that is a whole other kind of stranger danger. And if you want to know the truth, it's why I even jumped into TikTok. Because I was appalled at at the accounts that are huge, that there's a fitness instructor or professional of some kind saying, do this many sets, this many repetitions, and also saying, do this much weight. No one knows you and nobody who doesn't know your history doesn't know many of the things we're going to talk about. So I won't go go too far into them, but if someone doesn't know you, and I would suggest that you know, if I were posting a video somewhere online and one of the clients who I might work with once or twice a week on a regular basis asks, how much weight should I use? I would be hesitant to tell them, why is that? Because depending on where you put that exercise in a sequence, it changes the weight you can lift. For instance, if I go to the gym and I do Deborah spending too much time with Deborah is not a good thing. So sometimes I will go to the gym as opposed to working out here, even though I have everything I need here. I had to get out in parallel play and see real people. And I might go to the gym some days and I will do lap pull down and that'll be my first exercise. But if I wait and lap pull down is one of the last things that I do, and I do that purposefully, sequence should change regularly because what you do fresh, you're going to do better. I'm going to lift more weight just kind of within the, what do I usually do on lat pull down? I have a range of, you know, usually from here to here, this is reasonable, but it'll be on the lower end if I'm using that exercise last. It'll be on the higher end if I'm using that as one of my first exercises, meaning post warm up and dynamic movement. So I'm ready. And you should be thinking that too. So generic questions will get you either really poor, potentially injurious answers or inadequate ones where then you might feel, oh, that's not a fit or I can't do that or that is too light. I mean, there's so many ways it could go wrong. So I just want to point out to you that even me, please, please don't, you know, ask me for a point blank. So what I have to do in answer to these questions, like, How many sets? How many repetitions should we do? How many sets or how many reps? (laughs) Sets and repetitions, please. These are all just examples of the comments that came in. I have to ask questions. I'm Deborah Atkinson. You're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top struggles and concerns, but more than anything, hope to inspire you that you can age in a very different way than we've ever seen it, had it modeled for us. We are the new model. 
It is you. It is me. And whatever you believe will be true has the high likelihood of coming true. So I don't know about you, but I'm trying to imagine all things good, strong, powerful, enjoying and loving my life until that very last breath. So what we're going to do is support you a little bit more in the how to move method so that you can have the energy and vitality that you want, need, and deserve in this second and better half in this episode. So this social media post and a YouTube video demo prompted dozens, if not hundreds of questions and trying to stay in character limits and respond was failing me. So here's the reason why The answer to how many sets and repetitions, especially for a woman in menopause, is not an easy answer. The answer comes only after your collective responses to any of the following questions. So we're working behind the scenes on the best way to give you kind of a collective little algorithm so we could tell you, okay, based on all of this, because some of these are bottom line answers. It's like if you start here with your answer, don't don't bother going any further because this is going to tell you you need to start lower right so and let's begin it all right so first of all first question would be what's your experience level i mean are you just starting or starting over restarting if that's the case then we all need to start at a little bit higher repetition range I like to choose as that higher repetition range somewhere between 15 and 20. And I often go to 20 and it's not that I will never go to 25, but usually that is when we're working on how do we improve your gait? How do we improve your golf swing? We're doing moves with a lighter weight and then doing them with a little bit more rapid speed to enhance power, which is reaction skills. And it is our ability to not trip um, when we're older or right now, let's face it. So um, starting or starting over, probably 20. And then if you'll say, okay, 20 plus or minus, you know, three on either side gives you a range because it's never going to be perfect and every day is different. So that is your repetition range until until you're no longer starting or restarting. So that may take you a series of um, eight weeks, a couple of months to slowly progress where you'll be doing less and you're going to feel or hear what less is in a moment. If you're moderately experienced, and I would qualify that as you've been lifting two times a week for at least six months. Now I might been then say at least three months, but you know, generally for you and me to do something two two times a week consistently for three months, we're going to have a day in there where we don't, you know, we're going to have a week in there where we can't be it COVID, be it caring for somebody, be it traveling, be it, you know, I did something silly in the garden and I torqued my back a little bit, can't lift this week. You know, any of those things is going to happen. It's why I think six months consistently is a better indication. So if you are more moderately, then you've started, you've got that foundation, you did those regular workouts at about 20 reps. Now, maybe we drop that down and you're doing 15. So 15 plus or minus, you know, in, in ideally 15 or mostly minus, right? So maybe you don't make it to 15, but you're right about there. So we don't want you to go too much higher. Okay. What if you're experienced, you're athletic, and you participate in sports that require power? Here's a little FYI. Most sports require power. You're going to hit a golf ball, I think people associate that as, you know, this is a very low level. You're not getting your heart rate up kind of a sport standing still. You get to ride in a cart if you want to go that route, but there is a lot of power in a golf swing, at least one that goes somewhere, right? So think about that. And yes, you can swing easily. I watched my stepdad age in golf. Um, I became his stepdaughter as he was like in his early fifties and he lived until his late nineties and he played golf until 
mm, gosh, I don't know, maybe the last five years probably didn't at that point. But, you know, his clubs got bigger and bigger. His swing, however, got easier and easier, but he still hit it, you know, straight down the middle in the sweet spot of the club. So sometimes, yeah, you're going to lose a little power. He lost some distance, but he won all the time because he was in the middle of the fairway. So aggravating. Okay. So experienced athletic, we're going to give you all of the aforementioned. So you're going to have workouts or certain exercises in workouts where you're still going to use those higher rep ranges. It's not like you graduate and you never do them again. It's just like we're opening the gate. So now you can do that and that. And so with experienced or athletic needing power, including if you want to lose weight or you want bone density as a high priority, we'll get to that. You're going to want 10 or fewer reps with some of the things that you do. And when we stay tuned to the end, because you need to know, what does this mean if I say repetitions? What does that really mean? So if you don't know the answer to that question, you got to stay tuned to the end. Okay. So you put yourself in one of those categories that right now best describes you. And if you are somebody who used to be experienced and athletic and you are starting or restarting, it is okay. Don't shame yourself. It's just what's true. You're going to make that progress from restarting to athlete again faster than anybody else would have. So allow it, just let it be what's true. What's your biggest priority? It's my next question. Is it bone density? Is it you want to increase muscle mass or strength for aging? It's more of a I'm doing this for me right now because I'm maybe I'm seeing someone age not as optimally and that's not going to be me. Is your priority to increase metabolism, to boost your weight loss or improve your body composition? Um, and last but not least, is your priority performance? I mean, you may feel like right now I actually have you know, pretty good bone density. I, I'm, I know that's in place. My metabolism, my weight, body composition are actually where they need to be. And of course I want some strength, but my biggest maybe motivation for lifting weights right now is performance. I want a better golf game or I'm, I want to be a better tennis player or something. Is anybody competitive in pickleball? I don't know. Maybe that's it, but It'll be the first if somebody shows up saying, I want strength for pickleball. Um, you know, and it might be that you or you for someone else, if you're choosing it, want to improve your gait for aging optimally, for fall reduction. And now's the time to start thinking about that too, by the way. So which of those, I gave you four options, bone density, increase muscle mass and strength, increase your metabolism or performance, which is it. And you still got it, girl, the book. I actually lumped two of those together. I lumped bone density and metabolism because weight loss is obviously one of the biggest number one goals. But those two exercise prescriptions are very similar. Um, so increasing your lean muscle strength that's also going to happen with the bone density with increased metabolism. So really the trick question but those three, those top three, bone density, muscle mass, metabolism boosting, heavy weight does the best. And that means when we say that, so I'm teasing the end right now, heavy weight means fewer repetitions. So 10 or fewer is going to get you better results in this. So it's going to be more energy output. It's going to be better after exercise, caloric burned to allow your body to do all the healing and the kind of putting back or paying back the deficit in oxygen that you use. And then lighter is for performance. So if we're working on something like a golf swing, you know, and I know everybody's seen, okay, you put a weight on the end of the club and you swing that. No, no, no. Really, I mean, that was 1980s. I used to pick up two or three golf clubs and swing them because they were heavier as a part of my warm up. And really, that we don't do that anymore. I did not do that when I went for a golf lesson yesterday. I was afraid I would embarrass myself. So, um, 
we go lighter, like 40% of what we call a one rep max. That may mean nothing to you. But to me as a strength and condition coach, we know, I know if it's an 80% of one rep max, if that's where I want somebody to lift, that's the correlation to 10 or fewer reps. So 10 reps is right, right about there. Um, Definitely at 85%, it's 10 or fewer. At 80 reps, it may be 10 to 12. And when we get down to 40%, what is that like? That's like 25 reps, right? So we go a little bit higher when we're talking performance. You don't have very much weight, but usually we focus on speed. Okay, so two questions down we're going on. What's your body type? That's another way for me to know what's going to be the best for you. Now, again, I will say that based on body type, it doesn't mean you're exclusively going to do only this kind of repetition range and weight combination. You also need variety. So you also you know, want to go heavy sometimes, lighter sometimes, and joint by joint for sure, like your shoulders. Generally, we suggest when you're doing a shoulder specific, it's a lighter weight because lots can go wrong with the shoulder. So let's not do that. Let's just gain strength and endurance and corrective exercises so that we don't have problems with your shoulders later. So preventative kinds of things. But also, I mean, all of us, you know, depending on body type, we still, all of us need to focus on bone density. We want to focus on, you know, optimal body composition and reaction skills. So we all need certain ranges, but higher percentage of it based on your body type. So if you're more muscular, more athletic, just naturally kind of just have that athletic body, you're, you pick things up really well, you move in a coordinated way. Somebody says, show me this, me, for instance, last night. So I went, I did go for a golf lesson. And, you know, he said, Well, tell me about you. Tell me a little bit about you. What do you like to do? I said, Well, um, so I'm in fitness, so I I do it all. And and he said, I'm fairly coordinated. And I said, I'm coachable. So if you tell me to make a change, I'm probably going to be able to pick it up fairly quickly. I'd like to say quicker than someone else who may, may not have as good of body awareness. So that was the way I described myself. And so if you would say that, I would also say to you, you're probably also a little bit more muscular, a little bit more athletic, coordinated. You feel at least somebody shows you a new move or exercise and you've, you've got it. You got the feel in your body and what that feels like. Um, and if that's you, for women, here's what we need to consider. And, and not that we don't men, but women are much more concerned about this. You respond really well. So if you respond really well, the last thing you want is probably to do a lot of mid-range, like three times 10. That is 19, you know, 70 or 80 called and once that back you're going to gain lean muscle mass easier doing that. Now, you might not at your 60s and your 70s because we just don't have the hormones that we actually need to make that happen. But that would be more true if you feel like I do respond really well, then that range stay away. You can go heavier and you could also go lighter and you want to mix those two up, but you don't want that middle range because it may tend to make you feel. Now, again, I say this, that bulk is not possible, really. Women who want to bulk, they want to be bodybuilders or figure comp competitors. They have a hard time gaining bulk. So, so too will you. So if you are more linear, you're more angular, like you're already more lean and you're maybe worried now about being more frail. We want you to do heavy. And that's probably one of the most important, but you're also going to simply need to reach muscle fatigue. So what we want is we want you in that middle range. You are the one who should do those three times 10 because we want to take every opportunity to give you the opportunity to build more muscle right away. So not the extremes, but you're in the middle. Three times 10 is your gold. Last, if you're a curvy girl, so you've got a little bit more padding in the cushions, you've always been that. So I want you to think, not if you're a midlife woman, you're in menopause and you're experiencing, you know, I'm 
I've gained a lot of weight, maybe gained a lot of fat. Think about also, I mean, what was true for you? Not just what you're seeing right now, because, you know, we're not going backward, but I think your body composition, your genetics, that hasn't changed. So just speak to what's been true for you. If you're a curvy girl, you've got more padding in the cushions. We want to really focus on heavier for you. And you potentially could go a little bit lighter, but it's really a waste of time, except if you're a beginning and a starter, right? So if you're starting, we can't change any of the rest of these right now. Start light pick up. You've got to get your joints and your ligaments back into condition to be ready to do more if that's going to be your your call to action. So curvy girls, more power. So you're going to use heavy weights and heavy as, as high as you can up to a point where you feel vulnerable or risking injury and using power, meaning a speed component in it is going to help the most. That's the highest percentage. So there you have it. Okay. Next question. Do you have any conditions or prior or current injuries going on? So obviously we have to cater to those joints and it might be on a joint by joint uh, basis. So maybe you have a shoulder issue, you have a elbow, wrist, or knee issue. Then, Then that body part and those exercises that feature it we change what you do so it's appropriate. But um, elsewhere, think about what else is going on. So if you have a condition like arthritis, you have fibromyalgia, you have potentially Hashimoto's, which kind of includes um, hypermobility, but you don't have to have Hashimoto's to have hypermobility. So I put them separately. Or do you have osteoporosis, osteopenia? So now let me back up. If you have arthritis, fibromyalgia, Hashimoto's, those would say a little bit higher rep range, but not the highest. We're trying to avoid the stress on the joint with weight, but also avoid the stress on the joint with tons of repetitions wearing it out. So we want to find a sweet spot. You know, so 20 repetitions, again, not going all the way up to 25 or 28, which is kind of the top that would be appropriate for starting. Anyway, you may find that with the strength around the joint supporting it, you can do more down the road. Hypermobility, we want to go probably moderate strength for you after you've begun with lighter and then progress to it. Hypermobility could be a risk to you of going really quite a bit significantly heavier in that 10 or fewer repetition range because you just, you're going to have to use a lot of mental capacity to focus on keeping a slight bend in those joints to protect them. And last but not least, osteoporosis or osteopenia. Now, ultimately, we would want you to go as heavy as you safely can. So let's face it, though, somebody with osteoporosis often also has arthritis. They have the opposite ends of the continuum as far as recommendation. With arthritis, we want somebody to go lighter, more repetitions. With osteopenia, I would want you to go as heavy as you safely can. You have to use the limiter. So it's always going to go, it's got to be on the light end. That's better than nothing. We might then add a little power if you're able to tolerate that well. And then you're going to have to say, because I can't do the exercise with the strength or the weight that I really would like to for optimal osteoporosis or bone health, I'm going to really pay attention to my lifestyle habits, to my diet and do as much there as I possibly can. So Moving on, what does the number of repetitions mean? And I'm also going to say, how does the number of sets impact you? Because if I can give you all those answers, right? Now you've just got them and kind of circled in each division. I need lighter, I need heavier, I need lighter, lighter, lighter. You've got some answers. And remember, if anywhere you got, I need lighter because of where I'm at with this one, then lighter is your answer. You can't go heavier if you can't, if you're at lighter and that is your indication. That's where you're starting though. And there may or may or not be the ability to progress to heavier. 
But you need to know this answer. What does the number of repetitions mean? So it doesn't mean you just pick up what you have in your living room or that spare bedroom sitting there. If I say your number ideally is you're fatiguing at 15 repetitions, you need to have a weight that will allow that to happen, that at 13 and 14, and you're like, I don't know if I can get this last one. Like I'm starting to fall apart or I'm starting to cheat. I'm starting to use other other muscles. So you need to know that you have the appropriate weight for the range that you're looking for. So if you're following, say, a video and you know they're doing 15 repetitions well you're going to go the speed that they go you've got to have the match for the weight that will fatigue you when that one's done and you're moving on to the next one you don't just want to say oh put him down she's moving on to the next one if you could have done 5 10 10 more that's not going to work because you've got to have that overload of reaching temporary muscle fatigue so to um, give you a different scenario. So maybe what you're doing is watching a brief demonstration or a here's the start and here's the stop of this exercise. Here's the form. And you're just given, okay, do this 15 times to fatigue. You can now go at your own speed. And trust me, slower is actually much much harder. That's time under tension. But my preference is using power, that's speed during the lifting phase, stopping at the top, pausing, and then slowly letting that come down. Now we have the best of both worlds. We get power and we also get more time under tension. So that's an ideal way to uh, apply the number of repetitions to fatigue, especially if you've got something going on that doesn't allow you to go heavier and heavier. Or If you're limited by the weight you have at home and the space or the desire or willingness to buy more weights, that's another way around it. And sometimes that's what you have to do at the gym because you can't get what you want and you shouldn't probably be just sitting and waiting for five or 10 minutes. Who's got that kind of time? Okay. Now let's talk about the number of sets. How many sets should you do? So here in general guidelines for almost all of us, one single set of a single exercise is not very useful. Just probably 30 years ago, it was only beneficial if it was excruciatingly painful, heavy, and you truly reached fatigue and, you know, like five or fewer repetitions. We don't want to do that, number one, because the warm-up preceding that would need to be very, very good in order not to injure you. And there's also this piece that for women over 40, we're now well aware that volume really matters. So the more volume we have, the better the exercise result. But or and, and this. So I hope you didn't just shut off because this is really important. We don't want to get the volume from more days per week. We don't even want to get the volume from do a dozen more exercises. We want to get the volume from the number of sets of quality exercises that work major muscle groups. And that means if you are short on time and you have 15 minutes to do a strength training workout, you can still get volume. And you may think, what? She's lost it. Finally, we knew it was coming. No. So what's happening is you would say, let's choose major muscle groups. So if you've been here for a minute, you know, I would choose a squat or another lower body activity, like a lunge that is getting lots of joints, meaning lots of muscles involved. And then I choose an upper body for chest and an upper body exercise for the back. So I'm going to get major muscle groups of the chest, the back, and the lower body. That's going to be in lower body. That's your glutes, your quads, and your hamstrings are involved in a squat. In your chest, it's your pectoralis major muscles, but it's also your triceps are involved. 
in a row or pulling exercise, you're going to get your trapezius, but you're also going to get some smaller muscles like the biceps. I've got now seven major muscles. That's pretty good for 15 minutes. So the number of sets giving volume to would be, I would do those three exercises, three or four times. If my time permitted, I would get that fourth, but definitely I can do three sets in about 10 minutes. Now I'm not counting the warm up, the, the cool down, and those are not included. That would be an addition to, but that's a pretty effective use of time. And I use that for consistency. So whether you're listening and you're a lawyer, you're a doctor, you're a realtor, you're running your own business, your own show, you're a caregiver. I mean, we all get reasons why we're extremely busy. I don't have all that much time, but I want to stay on track. That is my go-to consistency workout. You know, and sometimes it's an early flight. I'm just like, I'm not getting up any earlier, but I can get up 10 minutes earlier and I can do this in my pajamas in my bedroom or now in my garage. So the number of sets impacts you significantly. So you want a minimum of two. If you're not doing two sets, I mean, you're barely bracing it, but that could be a consistency workout for you. I would try to get three, at least three, and call that your minimum. And that's you and me being, I guess, a little bit of overachievers. The research will say at least two, but I would suggest to us, let's get three, let's take fewer exercises and do them better. But even if you could do four, you're going to get then greater volume. If we've reached fatigue and we've done three exercises with four sets of them, do math with me, 12 different times you've reached muscular fatigue and you've included seven different muscle groups. That's a good way to apply volume. So want you to realize that asking how many sets and repetition should I do as a woman in menopause to another woman in menopause, that is me to you, it's not an easy answer. And if you're looking on social media and you, you see it too, I know you do, you see those rapid answers come out, like do this many sets, do this many repetitions. If they don't know you, they don't know your history, they don't know your body type, they don't know if you have conditions or you have any prior or existing injuries, they don't know what your primary priority is. That is a really hard thing for someone to answer. And the best, I'm patting myself on the back a little bit here, I guess, but the best answer to that question was, it depends. And I think you will find more and more that the professionals who are really highly qualified need to answer that way to take the best care of you. Because we'd rather educate you on why it's hard to give you just a quick answer. Although I know we all want that. Can't it just be easy? Right? Darn it. But sometimes you've got to really think about it. And you and whoever the expert is, we are co-collaborating all the time. And there's a right answer and there's a right exercise and there's a right way to do an exercise, no matter what's going on for you. But these things are super important. So we inserted this one, by the way, I bumped something else because there was just so much ask about this. So if you notice today's podcast was released a little bit late, this would be why. And we've got some fantastic things coming up for you in the future, including yesterday, an interview that I did that will be out in the future. If you're listening live, this is uh, toward the end of July. And um, I interviewed a 93-year-old woman. So first of all, I was floored by the idea. Not that she was coming on and we were talking, but I was like, okay, somebody just raised the bar here. 93, still getting herself booked on podcasts. I'm like, huh. (laughs) I know I have thought to myself, I don't think, I can't see myself ever retiring. I love what I'm doing. I love the audience that I serve. And, you know, why would I want to stop doing that? Because 
sometimes you have that lack of purpose and it's, it's a letdown. It's not the, you know, I didn't, I never wanted a job that I wanted to retire from, but I don't know that I was thinking I'd be doing podcasts in 93. So I got to get on it. All right. So there you have it. If you are not yet started, not doing anything yet and haven't found a good fit for starting or restarting, or if you're a woman like me who is more muscular in nature, but I noticed about two and a half years ago, what I was doing wasn't working anymore. And that was the real kind of pivotal year for me to, it was a second wake up call from what I knew to be menopause fitness that works. But I had to see it in action, not working first to really get it. I created the five day flip from that. So five days, they're very light and you will question, could this possibly work for me? (laughs) So don't take my word for it try it out yourself. So if you're not doing something already that is working, getting you good results, I will put the link to the five day flip. For those of you who are um, struggling, I talked about squats and lunges today and it being them being major muscle group stimulators. And we all want strength to get ourselves out of a chair, you know, at some point will be the why, but also just so that we can do the things we love and do it with some independence, deciding. Now, it's not all bad to depend on someone, but by choice as opposed to by having to. So I'm going to put a uh, a special freebie that uh, we created because lunges are the nemesis for a lot of women. And what I found is all, all the comments about lunges in a post came back to, I've never heard that before. This is a game changer. Nobody has ever told me that before. And many of these women who are giving those comments have been doing group fitness for years, but you know, an instructor can't see every individual's feet, toes, head, know where they're at and give individual feedback if there's 30 or more in a room. So take these, look at them. There may be a better solution simply because you get a different cue that you've never heard before. Or if it's not possible, I give a lot of variations so that you can take a substitute, still work those major muscle groups, and yet have the less stress or elimination of stress on the joints. So what are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 together. And today's show notes are at flipping50.com forward slash sets and repetitions.